G'day everyone, welcome to Animal Tales with Tim Faulkner, that's me, and today I'm talking about Rufus Betongs. This is Ella, and Ella is a Rufus Betong. Now Betongs are a member of the Macropod family, which means they have big feet. Now, the friends, or cousins, or relatives range from Betongs to Potteroos to wallabies, to rock wallabies, to kangaroos, wallaroos, there's so many of them. But she's about two thirds grown. Uh, she's lived with me since she was this big. Uh, she was actually thrown from the pouch by her mum. Um, and it happens sometimes. If marsupials are chased by a predator, uh, or they're under danger, the mum will actually leave the joey. She can come back and get it later if the threat's gone. But in Ella's case, we're not sure quite what happened, but she was abandoned. So she's lived with me 24 hour around the clock care while she was little. And because it's coming into winter now, I don't want to return her back up to Aussie Ark with her friends and family until we get through winter. And they're herbivores, which means they eat fruits, vegetables, plants, things like that. Now you watch how she uses her little hands and they're quite dexterous. And she'll tear that corner part inside her mouth She's got little teeth that are sharp at the bottom and sharp at the top. And they actually pull bits of the vegetable off. And the back teeth are like grinders. And they do this to actually make that food palatable and so she can swallow it. Now in the wild, they're called a, a mid-level herbivore. Now mid-level because she's not small like a mouse and she's not big like a kangaroo. And so they go around and they eat all the new shoots of plants and grass and things like that um, at about the height you can see that she's feeding at now. The thing with marsupials is that they grow up very rapidly. And so Ella here isn't quite a year old and she's already at the stage where she could have a joey. Now, when that happens, what will happen is she mates with the male. She's only pregnant for a really short time, like 20 days, really short. And she gives birth to a joey. It's this big, the size of a grain of rice. The joey is pink. Its eyes are there, but they're covered over with skin. The ears are folded down on the head. And it crawls from down here near what's called her cloaca and it crawls up into the pouch and it attaches to a teat. And when that teat gets in its mouth, it swells a bit and the joey's fused onto the teat. And a few months later, we'll start to see a little head come out. Now, bedongs, as we said, they're a mid-level herbivore. They take shelter in little drays. Now, a dray is something that they build of grasses and bits of bark, and they make a beautiful round circle. And with this tail, it's not like a monkey's tail at all. They, they can't do a lot with it, it's for counterbalance. But like they're around my finger, she'll wrap up bits of grass, take it back and build a nest. Now the thing is that they really bunker down in that nest and they rely on it. What's happened in Australia in the last 200 years is the feral fox and the feral cat have been introduced. They don't belong in Australia. Now predators in Australia are like Tasmanian devils or quolls, which are another carnivorous marsupial, maybe eagles. And you imagine for an eagle, if Ella just stays in her dray at daytime, the eagle can't spot her. It's that simple. With the devil and quoll, they hunt really differently to the feral fox and feral cat. And Ella's had to deal with devils and quolls for all of history. But the fox and cat, they hunt in different ways. They're not from Australia. And Ella doesn't know how to deal with them. If the fox scent is on the ground, maybe it's we, it's urine, or the scent from its fur, Ella doesn't recognize it as a threat. She doesn't even know it's a bad thing. And that's why in the last 200 years, so many mammals have gone extinct in Australia. It's a really sad number, 40 animals. And the thing with extinction is it's irreversible. It's permanent, you can't come back from it. On top of that, those wildfires that burnt through Australia early this year, really impacted Rufus Bedongs. They live along the Great Eastern Ranges, along the Great Dividing Range where the fire affected areas were. So her species, is vulnerable in some areas, endangered in others, but it's one of these small mammals that needs help. And that's what Aussie Ark does. We have lots of these, and that's where Ella's from. Now, watch what she's doing there. She's grooming. So, just like your pets, she'll groom. She's cleaning her face now. But this is what she really wants. This is her milk. Now, she's a bit big for milk, but I like that she's still my little mate, so we do that each day. This is an artificial tea and an artificial milk. Her mum's milk isn't something that I have access to, so this is a carefully formulated mixture that she drinks. 
Now, while she's having a drink there, I want you to have a look at a few things. They're called a Rufus Bedol. Now, she lives in my office through the day and she goes out to play, but this is her little home until she goes back up to where her friends are. The light's not the best, but they're called a Rufus Bedol. You might wonder, what does Rufus mean? A Rufus is a type color. So if you look closely around her little nose, around her eyes, up on her ears, down along her coat, you'll see that Rufus color. Now, the tail is doing exactly what it's meant to right now. She leans back on it. When she hops, it counterbalances her. Right now, she's leaning back on it, and that's how she stays upright. Her feet, like all kangaroos, wallabies, potteroos, and bedongs, are quite long, and that's where the scientific name comes in, macropus, uh, which it is, that means big-footed, large-footed. Her little hands are quite dexterous. Things like grey kangaroos can use their hands, but not as well as Ella. Her hands are really, really useful, and she's got big black eyes because she's nocturnal. Her nose has a good sense of smell. Ears, she obviously hears well. They're actually one of my favorites. She's been such a good friend to my kids. And you know, the thing is, for all the kids watching, you've got to stay connected with your wildlife and your nature. Things like this, or pets, even fish, cats, dogs, birds, as long as they're kept away from native wildlife, can be really good, and I believe for you, they help you develop um, your affinity with wildlife. Why I like that is because if you develop that now while you're young, I know what's gonna happen when you grow up, and that is you don't wanna see a world without these animals. Your homework for today is to figure out how to spell betong. I'm not going to tell you, I've given you enough clues. They're a small macropod, a small kangaroo, called a betong, you figure it out. Next is, how many species of betong are there in Australia? And the last one is, which states do the betong live in? And if they live in multiple states, meaning Queensland and New South Wales, I want you to tell me that too. Hit me with your answers in the comments. See you later. Thanks for watching everyone. Now, the keepers and I are looking after all of our animals and our families, but we all have a bit of extra time at the moment, like you probably do too. So this is a great distraction for us and hopefully you. Now, if you like what you've seen or wanna show me your homework, just put it into the comments. This is what I do, connecting people with nature and that can't stop. I'll see you next time.